Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going over the topic of reading performance charts in a pilot operating handbook for an aircraft. In today's lesson, I'm focused on using a PA-2161, which is a Piper Warrior. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on takeoff performance and landing performance to clear both a 50-foot obstacle on takeoff and to land on the approach end with a 50-foot obstacle um, and roll out to a stop. I'm going to use ForeFlight for this exercise today because it can really has some neat tools in it to make reading these spaghetti charts much easier. So follow along. When we're planning a flight, one thing we really need to do right off the get-go in regards to uh, performance characteristics of the airplane is to determine the required ground roll to take off and then eventually how to clear how much um, length of runway and horizontal distance we need to clear a 50-foot obstacle. This particular uh, chart here is for obstacle clearance, short field takeoff, uh, ground roll distance. Why would we care just about the ground roll distance? Well, if we know we have a short runway, um, we want to have some perspective of when we expect to get off the ground. If we come up with a number that says we need um, 800 feet of roll distance and we have a a marker that tells us we got a thousand foot um, of runway left, we know that once we get beyond that 800 that we might want to consider uh, aborting the takeoff. So that's uh, one of the big reasons why we want to know what the ground roll distance is. So I'm going to go here and assume a 20 Celsius uh, day. We're just going to go straight up to our field elevation. At the airport I'm taking off of out of Laconia, it's about 500 feet above sea level. We assume that's our pressure altitude for the moment for simplicity of this discussion. We'll come over to our reference line. We have about, uh, from our weight and balance, roughly 2,200 pounds of uh, weight for the aircraft. We'll now come straight across over to our reference line associated with headwind tailwind component. We have about a five knot headwind component. We'll come down to about the five knot headwind, and then we'll come straight across here. And we need about a thousand feet of ground roll before we can rotate or before we take off. If I want to change the shape or curve at all, I just hit the uh, gridded square, and now I can tap in here, and I can kind of straighten out some angles here, clean this up a little bit to, to make it look a little bit neater. Um, where all the points are, I can just adjust them as needed, and now I have a cleaner look. And if I wanted to uh, modify this for other another day, I could just keep this particular chart that our graph that I've set, and I could maybe make it a different temperature. Um, I could change the uh, weight, maybe bring it down to uh, 2,100 pounds, come across this way, and maybe we have a 10-knot headwind, and I can just bring it down like that. And so now I would need only about 700, 720 feet uh, on that particular uh, scenario for temperature and weight. All right, looking at the POH again, it's Performance Characteristics Section, Chapter 5 for this PA-2161. We're now going to try to figure out what's the total distance we need to clear a 50-foot barrier from throttle up to rotation and again to clear that 50-foot object. Again, we're going to use the same scenario. We're going to start out at 20 degrees Celsius. We're going to come up to about 550 feet. We're then going to work our way across to roughly uh, the reference line for our weight. We'll just follow the line parallel down till we get to about 2,200 pounds. Right about there. And then we work our way across to reference line associated with the wind. And again, we're going to assume a five knot headwind component. We'll come down there and then work our way across. And we need, it looks like, roughly 1,400 feet. Uh, to clear a 50-foot barrier. We want to kind of square this up a little bit. We'll hit the uh, box here, and we'll just um, clean up some of these lines here a little bit. Square it up neat. Come on down a little bit. And as you can see with the cleaned up look, we're basically just under 1,500 feet to clear uh, a 50-foot obstacle based on a 20 degrees Celsius day, uh, field elevation roughly 500 feet. Um, again, that's pressure altitude, but I'm assuming today pressure altitude is equal to the true altitude for the moment. Um, and then going 
over to 2,200 pounds coming across with a five knot headwind component. And that's where we come up with our roughly 1,400 and maybe 75 feet. Okay, so in addition to the takeoff performance, we also wanna look at the landing performance. Uh, so again, we're looking at the POH for this PA-28161. And we're gonna come down here, we'll put our pen on. Okay, so for this scenario, we're gonna assume again, 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, but maybe the airport we're landing at is 1,000 feet above sea level. And we're gonna come straight across here and we're gonna assume for the moment that there is no wind. And we're just gonna come straight across here and then down. And then I'll use my little square um, box there. And we'll try to clean up a few of these lines a little bit here. So just to make it a little bit neater. And we can see in this scenario that at roughly 20 degrees Fahrenheit at 1,000 feet uh, sea level, pressure altitude, if we come across, um, if we have no wind, we're going to need just over 600 feet for ground roll to land. And if we want to clear a 50-foot barrier, such as trees on the end of the runway, we're going to need somewhere around 1,100, maybe 1,150 feet um, total distance to clear that 50-foot uh, obstacle at the end of the runway and land and roll out. So again, the rollout will be roughly a little over 600 feet, but the total distance to clear that 50-foot tree that was at the approach end, uh, we're going to need close to about 1,150 feet or so. So that's how you go about reading a takeoff performance chart and a landing performance chart uh, for an aircraft. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.